Okay, this is your sim racing results for the week. Tony Diamond sim racing results. <laughs> With my water jug. <laughs> so, this is going to be a little different this week. Crusher got a gift from Australia. <laughs> I got a gift. You got a gift <laughs> from your favorite race car driver. Matty B! <laughs> He's the man! Look, we got, got you a it. picture and everything, man! Oh, <laughs> hell yeah, look at that! Matty B! Matty B! Matty B! <laughs> hell yeah, I'm hanging that up on my wall! God damn! Look at that shit. Look at his autograph and everything. Shit, I'm just gonna set that dude right here. <laughs> During the whole damn show. Look, and you get the top of his head, but you know who it is. <laughs> look, look, I'm gonna do it right there. <laughs> how you doing, Matty? <laughs> hey, Matty, how you doing? High five. High five? <laughs> he don't wanna talk right now. <laughs> he don't wanna talk. He's speechless right now, I'm sure. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> That's a good present. <laughs> Favorite race car driver right there, Matty B. <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly not yours. I'm not, no, I'm not it. <laughs> <laughs> well, your sim racing results for Sim Limited this weekend is there it's a bye week. <laughs> We're taking the week off. So, but they will be back next week. Sim Limited Racing? Yes. They have a Dot com. Oh, yeah, we forgot that part. They're taking the week off. Yes, it's a bye week. That's yeah. what they call racing when you're not racing for a week. It's called a bye week. So, but their next race will be August 31st in the Clear Cups at Euro Ring. So, our factor two, those are your guys. That's your club. So, you need a club for that. Go to Sim Limited Racing. Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> now, on to Adrenaline Factor. They had uh, Dot com. One, two, three races uh, at Pukkoe. Pukkoe. I, I apparently said that wrong last week. Pukkoe? Yeah, it's Pukkoe. Pukkoe. Yeah, Pukkoe. Pukkoe my ass. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to insult any New Zealand's or Australians. Oh, no. Because we, we have some buddies there that watch yes, that. Yes. Thank you very much. And last week I said it wrong, and they informed me that I was wrong and how I was wrong. You were wrong, and this is why. why. Yes. What do you think about that, Matty B? He's speechless. Still ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, I do hear. He ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> he ain't got nothing to say. He's completely speechless. Matty B. <laughs> Look, right now I could punch him in the mouth. He wouldn't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'll get the king out. On to your adrenaline factor. Dot com. Results. They had three, we they had three weeks. Three races at Pukukoi. And race one, Deviator took the win. Followed up by Paparosa. And Glenn took third. Uh, race two didn't change. Glenn, or not Glenn, Deviator dominated. What the hell? And swept the weekend. Well, way to go, dude. Damn. Race two was Deviator, Paparosa, and Glenn again. Race three, it was Deviator, Glenn, and Mike 80. Mike 80 got in there for Yes, the Mike 80 got in there. Last season, Mike 80 was the man. Well, he was one of the one of the guys. Sound like Deviator is yes. whooping ass right now. Last last season, Glenn and Mike Eddy were uh, the top guys. The top dudes. You know, Deviator was there with them. So was Pat. But this season, it seems to be a little bit of a flipper in the early season. Man. So, uh, on to your EFNet sim racing dot. Net. Net. I don't know what to fuck. It doesn't really that. work, does it? Not <laughs> net. No, it don't work. <laughs> now, I asked 
for the racing results <laughs> because I cannot seem to figure these damn things out. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of stuff in a column, and I'm going, wow. You know, the, I, I read the race reports, you know, which is very time consuming, which I enjoy doing, but then I have to go sift through all the stuff and go, who won? Yeah, you yeah. know? So, and I was in the race for about five laps, and then I wrecked. Imagine that. <laughs> Bad driver. So, Damn. so I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you guys the season standings at this point because we're in like round three. So, Cameron Wagner, Daytona prototype. Wait, let me, sh let me try this again. In first place in the Daytona prototypes in the championship standings is Cameron Wagner, followed up by Kevin Julia in second place, Chris James in third, Pat Sweeney in fourth, Sweeney, and Doug Newman in fifth. In the GT division, Caleb Marcus, Mark, I can't. Mark and one. Marklin? Yeah, we don't like him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get you guys' names right. Uh, is in first. John Colbert Jr. is in second. Dave Hudson. Hutton. Hutton. Dave Hutton. Dave Hutton. Not Hutchins. Hutton is in third. Brandon Smith is in fourth. And Brian Potvin. 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 Yeah, so there's a certain way to say some of these names, and I'm just not that good at it. Mm -hmm. It's in fifth. So, and uh, they had their big race, at, or they had a race in the Grand Am Series at Montreal last night, and it was a really, really good race. This Cameron Wagner guy seems to be the real deal so far. Seems to be the one to be. He's won three in a row in the Daytona Pro Yeah. Times. And he's pretty unstoppable. So you ain't playing, huh? He's got the bar raised up really high up there. So what do you think about that, Maddie B? You think you can go over there and beat him? He's got what it takes, I think. <laughs> Maybe. Still ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> so, and on to your gone broke racing results. There was some series that took the weekend off or took the week off. So uh, last Tuesday at Gone Broke Racing at Spaz Car. You can see you can find Spaz Car at Gone Broke Racing, or you can find Spaz Car on Facebook. Now, why do they call it Spaz Car? It's Spaz Car because it's supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be a serious, seriously. Uh, they collect points, but at the same time, they like to have fun over the competition. See, because when I think of a Spaz, I think of <laughs> a fucking retard. <laughs> I don't think, you know, when I think Spaz car, I'm thinking like fucking retarded car or something. <laughs> <laughs> like the car is freaking the fuck out. So. The, the guy who runs it, Spaz. you're a Spaz. Spaz, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> who is the guy who runs it? Uh, he actually, we're going to actually try and get him to do an interview with the scene. Uh, and he's agreed to it. So now we just got to figure out how to yeah. get it on the scene in video. Yeah, I've got a few people that want to do interviews with us, so we have to figure out this thing, you know. Yeah, we may have to Skype or something. Yeah, Maybe. yeah, we so, may have to, so. so. I think I think I'm set up for that, I think. I've got a Skype account, so, yeah, we can, we'll figure something out here. We'll get I'll this. I'll talk to my agent and find out how that all works. We'll get this. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Yeah. So, but Spazcar, Spaz Spazcar again, run Spazcar. You can find him on Facebook. Uh, it's Spaz Car on Facebook, I think. I mostly don't know. Or you can go to my Facebook page, Tony Diamond. V8SC Diamond. This is yeah. no, your that's your YouTube. Yeah, your Facebook you is Tony Diamond dot one four four. Yeah, that's it. Then you can go to Spaz Car there. And you can also find Spaz Car on Torn TV on YouTube. I've been watching the Torn TV. I like that. Yeah. I like the Torn TV. It's got a lot of good videos, and there's some a lot of, a lot of tutorials on there, too. Yeah. So, But the day, Spanish Car did the, did the Daytona 500 Tuesday, and uh, it was a good race. Oh, man, it was an awesome race. So <laughs> I think I got fifth or something like that in that thing or something, you know. I'm already lost here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Mark Colm took first place, Brian Johnson took third, David McNell, McKell, McConnell, see, McConnell, McConnell, 
took third. Tony freaking Diamond took fourth. And the defending champion, Jeff Hooper. Took Hooper, it took it in the pooper. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good racing. The racing was very tight. There was no real clear winner until about four or five laps from the end. <laughs> we had a bunch we had a bunch of green white checkered starts at the end and there was just no way to get a lot of two, a lot of passing yeah there was just no way to get you know because at Daytona it's such a big track and everybody stuck together there was just no way to get to the outside to pass the three cars that were up front yeah you know they were battling it out and then me and the champer behind them with somebody else behind us and we just could not get the draft on them to do what we wanted to do which was pass them on the outside and I think there was a little bit of a, uh, I don't know. It, when you race restricted plate racing, there has to be some agreements, you know, because you need people's help. Because you have to draft to the front. And I think at the end, we all kind of, I think the first the first three cars, they worked it out until the last corner where the rest of us were trying to go now. You know, <laughs> so. And uh, I came very, very close to catching them, so. But the best best cars won and the three drivers that, that took the top three were from uh, uh, RFN which is run from nothing run from nothing team yeah they're a team oh a team yeah oh. so and they did an awesome job they're all excellent drivers so this Tuesday they'll be at Phoenix in Spaz Car so if you're looking for Spaz Car if you're looking for NASCAR check out Spaz Car so, so Spaz Car does NASCAR yes that's easy for me to remember. I can remember that shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's NASCAR and NASCAR. Uh, Wednesday, the DT, DRMs went to Zanderoot. And if you don't know what a DRM is, it's a 70 model GT car. And the things are very overpowered and very under handling, you know, because the technology of the time, the 70s, you know. Yeah. But they were very, very cool cars. They're very cool cars. So, uh, in race one, the champion Jeff Hooper took the victory. Yeah! Over Dan Wheat, who's the pack guy. He took second. Dale Green, who's a front runner, finished third. In race two, Jeff Hooper, the champ, took it again. Now, Hooper took it in the pooper Tuesday <laughs> and got in fifth place. His ass, got, he, don't, he don't like it in the pooper, do you? <laughs> he don't like me in back there. His <laughs> ass jumped up there quick the next day. <laughs> but Jeff took first in the second race, followed by Chris Schirmer in second, and Dale Green took third. Damn. Now, the DRMs has been with Gone Broke Racing for around about a year now, but there have been some scheduling changes with the moderator, so they're going to have to put the series on hold for a while. Damn. So, next, not this Wednesday, because this is VA Supercar Wednesday, but next Wednesday after that, will be the final DRM race. So everybody's invited to join if you're ground broke racing to come out and kick the finale off, at least for the season. It, it's a season end, and it will resume at a later date. You know. So are they planning on bringing it back? They eventually, are. Or? I think eventually they will bring it back. You know, once once we'll the moderator, moderator, maybe. Yeah, Chris, Chris Sherburn is the moderator, and he's a very busy guy with his job, and. He's gonna have to put the series on hold for a while uh -huh. because hour changes or something like that, you know. So, but and you know, and he's been pretty faithful with this this series. You know, it's a very excellent series, and the guys really enjoy it. You know, so to see it go is kind of a bummer, you know. Yeah. But to know it's gonna come back is awesome as well. You know, they'd be looking forward to it then. Yeah, it'd be probably just a little bit longer off season than the drivers are used to. But in replace of that, they're going to run a few exhibitions with the Block Pain, Block Pain Endurance Series Championship, <laughs> which are GT cars from Europe. And all the cars are spec equal. You know, you got Ferrari, Mercedes, Aston Martin, McLaren, and all these cars are completely even throughout the three or four classes. Now I'm going to make some people mad here. Okay. Aston Martin's got to be the gayest looking car I've ever seen. What the fuck, dude? 
I knew they'd get him. I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> gonna be the gayest looking car I've what? ever seen. Should be called Asshole Martin. That's what the fuck you said. Oh shit, I knew I'd ride. Hot coffee, out. anyone? <laughs> what do you think, man? It'd be high five. No? Alright. <laughs> he knows you're full of shit, too. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> oh. But they'll be running the block pain. Block pain. It's weird how it's spelled. So they're going to start running that soon? Or? They're going to run it in two weeks. They're going to do an exhibition race to try and gain interest, which I think the V8 supercars at Gone Broke Racing is the premier series. And then Spaz car sits right around that tier with it, you know, yeah. for being oval and road course, you know. You just can't really compare the two. But I, I honestly believe this new mod, the Block Paint series, will be the next big series next to the V8 supercars. Mm -hmm. I think it'll actually set Gone Broke Racing over the top and probably... Might even might even double their numbers for driver, you know, because this mod is just that good. These cars are that good. They look good. They drive good, you know. So I mean, it's, it's an excellent. Whoever built this mod just took their time and did so, an awesome so. job. So, so we're looking forward to that, but at the same time, we're kind of bummed that the DRMs have to take a break, have to take a back seat for a while, yeah, you yeah. know. So because they're both excellent. So now on to Thursday. Which is the GT3 class. Ground broke racing went to Spa, where Chris Sherburn swept the weekend at Spa. Good job, brother. And he was pretty badass in that race. Whooping ass. Yeah, he was pretty flawless. So, in race one, Chris Sherburn took the win, Dale Green took second, and Tony Diamond took third. In the pooper. <laughs> 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 in race two, Chris Schumer took the win again, followed up by Dale Green and Jason Hawks, the boss man. Um, that Dale Green is usually up in there, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's, he's up, up there pretty, pretty high on the charts most of the time. He's a pretty flawless driver. Pisses me off sometimes. <laughs> you know? Keep pissing him off. That's <laughs> <fun>. <laughs> He's a great guy. Everybody at Gone Road Racing are awesome guys. You know, they're guys you like to hang out with while you're driving. You know, and yeah, but you some series there you you don't really want to talk to the drivers. You know, but yeah, this, but this, you've this, said you could beat, beat that Jason Hawks dude bad. I mean, you <laughs> talked a lot of crap about him. I don't want to say nothing out loud. But, yeah, he's talked a lot of crap about beating you. <laughs> <laughs> now, back when Jason was a rookie, uh, in the Forza yeah. days, in the Forza days, I can give that man a run for his money. <laughs> but now he's he's like, uh, you know, it's like I was here and he was here. Well, now Jason Hawks is like here, and I cannot figure out how to get up there. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like what the fuck, you know? Because he's yeah. a two or three time V8 Super champion. At Gone Broke Racing, you know, damn. I'm still struggling to get my first one there. So, man, damn, damn, people for setting the bar Passed so high. Passed him up. <laughs> I've plateaued. I don't think I'll get any better than I'm getting right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, yeah, you know, I don't like to say a whole lot, but Del Green, he's talked a lot of crap about you too. <laughs> so second place, he said. Psh. I got that one in the second grade. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but it's always fun. It's good shit. It's good fun. It's good hard. Yeah. Good fun. You know, so we'll race the hell out of each other and <laughs> laugh about it. You know. <laughs> so, uh, where am I? Friday, they are. They started doing their preseason for the historic X series, Trans Am series. So, if you're interested in racing the '60s and '70 mile Trans Am cars. Sign up there and check that out. They did a bunch of testing Friday, and everybody walked away really happy with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I was there, but I didn't race, so you know. he would have wrecked anyway. Probably. He never had to be. I was setting up for Saturday, but Saturday we did the six-hour enduro at oh, where was that damn race at? Oh, Imola. No, not Imola. Man. 
Bring for San Pablo. That's where it was at. So is that the one I walked in? Yeah, on? you came in and I was racing. Yeah. And then, uh, we did <clears throat> driver swaps where there was two drivers over six hours, and you came in for I don't know about no, well, towards the end. It was yeah. The last hour and a half or so, and we were running like thirty minute stints or something. So it's like I drive for a while. And then I'd take a break, and Chris Sherburn, who was my teammate, and an Aston Martin, uh, he would take over the car and then on his stint, and then I'd hang out with you and and spot for him, and then I then we switch back over. And, and I want to bring something up about that race, too, because he was way in the back. He was, <laughs> ooh, he was I thought we were going to have to pull a record and drag his ass around. <laughs> he was way back there. And... The other dude, what's his name? Chris Sherburn. He got up to the front. He was number one. And what <laughs> happened? He screwed it up. <laughs> he ain't lying. <laughs> it's funny though, because I was I was here and he's he's over, over there in the simulator. And I hear, No, what the fuck? <laughs> he fucked up. <laughs> I did. I lost. Five spots, like that. <laughs> and then I wrecked later on by myself and lost even more. It, it's funny because it, it, it'll be real quiet, you know, he's doing his thing. Focusing and, him, constipating. Fuck! What the hell? What'd I do, man? What is this shit? What's going on? <laughs> oh, you wrecked. It's all right, Dave. <laughs> now, we didn't have enough drivers to fir to fill a whole field of what we wanted, so we added AI cars as well. Oh, okay. So computer-driven cars on top of real drivers, which gets complicated. Yeah. Because people in uh, automated cars don't always drive the same, you know? And we ended up finishing third in class, which for, you know, we finished third in class according to the standings, but two AIs. <laughs> One. One. So oh, I don't yeah. really think that, I don't, you know, I guess if we were going to keep points on it or something, I guess we would have won. Maybe. Uh, you know? yeah, Does it really like, count people, people, you know, drivers? We would have we won. So, so you still count the AIs? Or? They're there to make it more complicated for the real drivers. Yeah. You know? So there's like not one guy that just runs away, you know, <laughs> because you have to fight. 30 something cars yeah. on a very small windy track. See, I, I watched you do like the last hour yeah. of that. And for all you dudes, might it be for you, all you dudes, that's a lot of damn work. <laughs> Cause I'm hearing like, yeah, I got this much left on this break and this break showing this. Yeah, I got this much gas. I got this many minutes. Yeah, it's showing this on my, I'm a win ratio and it, all kind of bullshit. <laughs> when I play a game, I just do it. <laughs> but you fuckers have all these numbers. Yes. And written at tire <clears throat> pressures, temperatures, brake temperatures, yeah. lap times. Just back and forth. And yeah. God damn, just race that car until it runs out of gas. <laughs> Checking the fuel. Fuel is a big key. See, I'd be the silly ass on the side watching people pass go, hey, you come on some gas. <laughs> <laughs> you got a gas can? I, I was the second driver in that car. So Chris Sherman was the main driver and I was his backup driver. Yeah. So he had all the data that we needed for the race. He did all the work. Good mm -hmm. car. I, I I think I supplied the setup for the car, at least a version of it, a base version of it, and then he tweaked it to where it would run that race. And then he did all the data for it. He knew how much the fuel was going to go, what the tire pressure should be, what the brake pressure should be. You know. So he knew what the car was going to do, and we just had to translate back and forth during the run what the car was doing and how yeah. the car was reacting. To certain things, and that's you know? crazy, man. Because I did the car up pretty good a couple of times, <laughs> and that affected the way it drives. You had like 30, 34 seconds of gas left. Yeah, and you were done. I almost ran out of gas getting back through right <laughs> <in>. So, <laughs> yeah, I had thirty seconds, and 
I think I coasted into pit road. Yeah. You know, I had to dump the clutch. Like zero point four on the damn yeah. gas. He, he was almost. Yeah, done. I made it right to the line in the last stint, so Chris would have a couple laps of fuel, <laughs> just in case he had to get in a big race at the end. So I saved some tires and I saved some fuel at the end of my last stint, so he would have more <laughs> at the finishing stint, and I pushed it right to the limit. So yeah. I mean, that was almost out of gas. You know, yes. right pulled in there. So. A lot of strategy. A lot of strategy goes that, That's why I don't do it because I'd never look at a number and I'd be fucking up. Everybody'd be mad at me all the time because <laughs> I run out of gas. I'm standing there with my gas can. Because <laughs> most races, you know, the average race, you have to get fuel and tires at least once. Yeah. Well, we had to do it several times <laughs> between two different drivers, two different driver styles, and the same car. So we had to make, try and make the car do the exact same thing with two people's brains in the way. You know? <laughs> and we did very well at it. So and I think next month we're going to Circuit of America, which is just as complicated as the last track, but it's a lot faster. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll be hitting like top speeds at like 175 mile an hour on our straightaway. You know, where this other track we probably maybe broke 140 mile an hour, you know, but it was all turning. You know, oh, yeah. so it was a low speed technical track where the next was going to be a high speed technical track. So one blink of the eye and the car could be toast. Oh, shit. And some of our fellow racers found that out at the last track, you know, <laughs> and then it could go wrong, went wrong for them. And by about, well, about an hour ago, I think they were done. So after six hours. So, and that was mainly for fun. We didn't collect any points. We just did it because it just seemed like a good idea to do. So oh, we wanted to see if we could pull six hours as a team, and yeah. And I think in uh, October we're gonna do the one, we're gonna do the Bathurst One Thousand. That's like a thousand kilo kilometers, I guess. And is that just because you all want to do it, or pretty much? We're gonna do it for the fun of it. It's like getting a case of gonorrhea just because you want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> And we are accepting drivers, too, if anybody else wants to come out and have fun, so. Yeah, and you know, where is that at? It's at Gone Broke Racing. Gone Broke Racing. Talk car. And it's on a Saturday. So. So. And, <laughs> let's see, we're on to Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday! Now, we usually run the Endurance Series one week, and the Porsche Series the next. Well, we throw the iRacing stuff. In between that, or on one Sunday, and R Factor 2, which is coming up soon on the opposite Sunday. So there's usually two races on every Sunday. But this week, Enduro Racers and the Porsche Series had the bye week. Another bye week. And the race that was racing was the iRacing GT Series at Watkins Glen. The classic Watkins Glen with the boot and everything. And they were racing the Corvette, all equal cars. Uh, the setup was supplied for those who, you know, weren't you are. at good as setting up a car as others. So everybody pretty much had the same hmm. same setup. Uh, it wasn't restricted to this, that setup, you know, but it was. they made it easy for you. So, and I got to thank Troy Eddie for giving me these results because it's like getting gold out of Fort Knox, getting results out of iRacer. It's just <laughs> that tough. So, but Troy Eddie took first place, followed up by Mr. Craig. Capone, Lawyer Forever in second, and Dale Green in third. Sheldon Wolution took fourth, and Armando Edwards. Armando. And Chris Sherman took sixth. How the fuck are you going to have a name like Armando Edwards? <laughs> <laughs> Armando. Armando Edwards. <laughs> <laughs> we just call him Bosa. B O S A. B O Z A. Boza. Bows. Boza. Yeah. Boza. Yeah. Not until, he, not until we started, like, I don't know. Somewhere along the way, people, st they were like, okay, we have to start using our real names. Which I've always used my real name, you know? Yeah. I kind of like my name. So, <laughs> everybody else had, like, nicknames, you know? Like, uh, Jarhead, or Lawyer Forever, or uh, Old Slow Fred, you know? Which his name is Sheldon. You know, yeah. You know, that's like, and, and that's that's like that old Big John thing. You know, they called him Big John. He was like five foot. You know, or they called <laughs> Little John. He's like seven foot. 
Yeah. Sheldon, yeah. Sheldon is old, slow Fred. Mm, it's low. <laughs> you know, it's an, it's an oxymoron, pretty much. So, <laughs> you know. But, uh, that's pretty much your sim racing results. You know? Wow. I, I, do we have time for one last thing? Yeah, sure. Alright, I want to bring this up because I've been seeing this a lot lately. Hold up. And... <laughs> he said he wanted some more coffee. Kind of. And my experience with this, this really, oh, this just irks me, I guess, a little bit. So, they call, they have the, they have a system, which they call weight rewarding system. Weight rewarding? Yes. Like weight is a reward of some kind. Now, who is this? Is this all? I'm seeing it sprinkled out throughout series from all, all the companies. Not all the companies, but most of them. What happens is, is if you win, they throw weight in your car to <laughs> slow you down. So, my version of a champion is the best driver giving you his best and winning. That's how champions are made. That's what Matty B just yeah. said. The bar is set. The guy who's the best sets the bar. Yeah. And this is the bar, and everybody else has to reach that bar to be the champion. Correct? <laughs> yeah. Same in any competition, wrestling, football, no matter what you do. So, penalizing this guy for being so good is almost kind of foolish. You know, it takes the incentive out of racing. You know, if you're going to be penalized one, two, three places, you know, the top three, top four, top five guys get, get these penalties. <clears throat> There's no incentive to try and get past that point. Why not stay in fifth and collect all the points? You know? Because this guy is a little bit slower in the straightaway, but his car handles a lot better in the corner. You know? And that's the thing that gets misinterpreted. It's like, okay, I'll throw 100 pounds of weight in your car. I couldn't. You know, could you walk around? Could you perform with 100 pounds in your back? 100 pounds in my underwear. I do that every day, you, <laughs> you know, know. But an extra 100. <laughs> you know, you just couldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. You know? And it, it makes it makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. So, so what you're saying is, the better guy is getting penalized for being better. They throw weight in so they can keep him down. But so much. they can try and slow him down. Now, the only time that it actually actually works is if you're on a straightaway that's long enough to slow a car down. Yeah, because your car weighs 100 pounds more than anybody else's, you know. So, of course, you're going to go slower in the straightaway, but not so much in the corner. Yeah. Because once you add 100 pounds to a guy's car, he starts tweaking his car, he's going to make it turn better. Yeah. Because he's already got that 100 pounds in there, so he knows what to expect. So, the only thing that's going to hurt him is in straightaway speed at the other end of the straightaway. Not at this gen, but the end that he's going to. <laughs> I've seen... Some of the world's best drivers be penalized for being great. And yeah, the only example no the only example I've ever seen that that actually slowed somebody down was at Mount Panorama, which is Bathurst. Which is the it's just you know, if you don't know what it is, it's a mountain course. It goes up to the mountain and then it has a straightaway that you can read up to you, you can reach up to 185 miles an hour down a straightaway. Yeah. I've seen a few of the best drivers kick ass all the way up the mountain and then got penalized coming down the street away, which is all downhill uh, uh, uh. with 100, 100 pounds or 150 kilos, whatever you want to call it, you know, <laughs> because they couldn't keep up. Well, they automatically lost the race because they can't keep speed. But they can keep up in the corners where you're trying to slow them down by putting weight in their car. You know? So, but in my opinion, and I'm pretty vocal about this. Do not penalize the great drivers. It takes the incentive out of racing, out of winning. It. I don't even race, people. But to me, doing that only takes away the fun from it. Yeah. Because if you're faster than me and you're winning races and... I'm gonna bust my ass and try to catch up to you. Yeah, beat me. That's 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 the same. If, if they slow you down 
What fun is that? Yeah, you're, you're at my much, speed now. You're pretty much giving it at that point. Yeah. <laughs> so he thanks for the free championship. You know, yeah. he, you tied his hand so I could get it. And I don't even race people, and that shit don't make sense to me. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Ah, damn. No. They it's tried a, it at uh, one of the companies I, I raced for, and they finally done away with it because we, the driver, said, this isn't working. There ain't nothing you can do to this guy to slow him down. You know, not that I complain anyway, because, you know, I think if you're that freaking good, it's just my job to try and catch you. Yeah. You know, if you're the champion, you set the bar there, that's where the bar is. You know, when I was the champion, that's where the bar was. Well, I'm no longer the champion because somebody raised the bar up higher. Yeah. And then the next guy that, that can beat that bar, he'll raise that bar up higher. You know, that's why, that's why championships are called championships. So, and trying to penalize your great drivers, so your not so great drivers can keep up is is, is bad policy. Yeah, that's... drivers get pissed off. They quit. You know, uh, you know, it's no fun. You know, it's just no fun. You know, so so that's my opinion on it. Do it, do with it what you will. But you know, most Man, series you got a point. Most series that I find that they have a weight penalty on, I don't race. Oh, uh, you don't? No, not because I'm good enough to actually get up there and win the championship, which we all are, but. I just don't think that it's right. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. you know, cutting somebody's power or adding weight to their car, that's some Formula One bullshit, is what it is. That's some out of control fucking moderators need your ass, we'll <laughs> say. <laughs> so, but that's my opinion, and this is your sim racing results for the week, and we'll see you next week. Maddie B says bye, Maddie B!